A while back we asked you guys which drum sound we should recreate next in this series. A lot of you wanted Snarky Puppy, which we did. The band with the second most votes was U2, so here we go. It was 1976 in Dublin when a 14-year-old drummer Larry Mullen Jr. placed a note on his school's notice board. It said he wanted to form a band and was looking for musicians to join him. Before he knew it, he had founded one of the biggest bands in music history, the Irish rock band U2. Initially called Feedback and renamed U2 in 1978, the band would go on to sell more than 170 million albums worldwide and never even change its lineup. Bono on vocals, The Edge on guitar, Adam Clayton on bass, and of course Larry Mullen Jr. on drums. Larry has elevated U2's music continuously by creating some quite unique drum parts and setups. Here's one of their most popular songs from the 80s, Pride in the Name of Love. Take a listen. This massive hit features not only the steady and always song-centered drumming approach of Larry's, but also the magic created by overdubbing toms and percussion to an already very fitting drum part. There's even footage on YouTube of them actually recording the song in the studio. To recreate this drum sound, we looked at live setups from the mid-80s that Larry played. He can often be seen using a kind of expanded 6-piece Yamaha kit featuring a 1-up, 3-down tom configuration with a single kick and snare and the third floor tom on his left. Around this time, he also started integrating percussion elements like timbals, cowbells, tambourines and bongos into his setups. We decided to go for a mix between what can be seen in photos and heard on the records. But before we get into the exact setup we used, it's time for a short shout out to one of our followers who took the time and commented a full setup gear list, even with the Zildjian cymbal setup given the fact we usually don't have Pisces cymbals at hand. We highly appreciate the time you took and it's always amazing to read all the comments from you guys and be sure, we read everything and are super thankful for everything you share with us. Since we want to go for the classic Larry Mullen sound from back in the day, we had to alter the setup list and came up with the following. First of all, we were sent a Gretsch USA custom drum set and challenged ourselves to get close to his sound with a different brand of drums. The sizes are pretty much the same as his. We used a 24 by 16 inch kick, 14 by 10, 14 by 14, 16 by 16 and 18 by 16 inch toms. For pride in the name of love, we chose a 14 by 6.5 inch Gretsch full range walnut snare. As far as drum heads go, we chose a Remo pinstripe ebony for the batter side of the bass drum along with an ambassador ebony for the front side. The ebony finish removes some mid frequencies and accentuates the attack and fundamental of the drum. And of course, it's black. There are lots of photos and videos from back in the day that show Larry using these heads, so we did the same. Pascal cut a large hole in the rezzo head of the bass drum just like the man himself did in this photo. For muffling, Pascal placed two light blankets inside of the drum and added a black one on top for looks. Miked with a biodynamic TGI-51, here's the kick drum sound. The toms Larry used in the 80s were usually converted to concert toms using the same method we applied in our video on Neil Peart. Check that out if you haven't seen it already. The idea is to cut out an old drum head in such a way that there's just enough real estate left to mount the bottom hoop, minimizing the effect the remaining bottom head has on the sound, effectively creating concert toms with the look of a double headed tom. We applied that method to all of the toms and fitted Remo Emperor heads with the same ebony finish on the batter sides. 
The tuning is medium in order to compensate for the lower fundamental of a concert tom over a double-headed one as well as the large size. For muffling, Pascal added some Remo crown gels as well as some mini muffs. We mic the toms from underneath with Biodynamic M88s, which creates a very isolated and quite unnatural tom sound that was modern at the time. Pascal only played the toms for overdubs, which is also why they have massive amounts of gated reverb on them. Check it out. For the snare, we kept the stock Gretsch single ply coated head and tuned it medium. Pascal then applied a detuning method, which was supposedly first used by Joe Porcaro. It involves tuning up certain lugs and detuning the ones on the opposing side of the drum. This creates an uneven tension across the head and introduces some muffling even before adding so called muffling tools. As a result, we only needed to add one Remo crown gel for actual muffling. Here's how the drum sounds through Biodynamic M201s on the top and bottom. To finish the setup, we added some Pisces symbols. Starting with the hi-hat, we used the same Formula 602 Sound Edge model we had in our Danny Carey video. The crashes are a 17-inch Rude Wild Crash, an 18-inch Signature Fast Crash, a 19-inch Rude Thin Crash, and a 20-inch Signature Power Crash. On the far right is an 18-inch Signature Heavy China. You might have noticed that we didn't mention a ride symbol. That's because Larry hasn't always played one himself in a lot of cases. Instead, we decided to set up a 13-inch LP drum set timbal and mic'd it from underneath using another Biodynamic M201 as seen in some photos. To finish off the set, we placed a set of LP bongos on the left and a tambourine and a cowbell on the right. Two overhead mics are enough to capture all of this. Biodynamic M90 Pro X's in a spaced pair configuration. We supported the hi-hat with an MC930 and finished everything off with a stereo pair of Biodynamic M130s in the room using a bloom line configuration. Before we get to the result, we at Art of Drumming would like to mention that if you want to help us sustain our work, there's a donation link in the video description below. Our platform artofdrumming.com is free and we want to keep providing that for you. That's why every small donation matters all the more to us. Thank you so much for your support. Now let's check out Pascal's performance of Pride in the Name of Love. One year earlier, U2 had released another one of their biggest hits, the highly political song Sunday Bloody Sunday. This one comments on the troubles in Northern Ireland at the time and features some obvious post-punk influences, for instance in the raw and purposely imperfect sounding drums, which keep on pounding throughout the entire time and were very different from most drum sounds heard around 1983. Not only is the approach to mixing this drum sound different, as it includes a lot more of the room microphones, but the drums themselves also differ. We decided to change the snare for a Gretsch Gergo Borlai signature drum, which has a 14 by 4 and a quarter inch brass shell and 40 strand snare wires. This creates a ton of crack and snare response. Pascal kept the stock heads and tuned the medium. He also placed a crown gel very close to the rim of the drum for less muffling effect. Here's how it sounds.
With a mix redone, here's Pascal's version of Sunday Bloody Sunday. Which of the two sounds did you like better? Tell us in the comments. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. We have a lot more coming. And remember to hit that like button if you like this video. See you next time.